You do know why she's not here, don't you, Aaron? She won't face him. I don't blame her. That's right, Megan. I'm here in Western Square for the premiere of The Automated, and here comes the man of the hour, Lawrence Blunderclatch. Lawrence, Robin Short with the NNN. Do you have a moment to talk to us? Shove it up your ass. I've nothing to say to you. Ah, Mr. Blunderclatch, are you sure Full of shit, the lot of you. You're no. vultures. We are live right now, Mr. Blunderclatch. Just... Good. I'm glad. Because you know what? Actually, I do have something I want to say to you. Your show is a disgrace. You lot will do anything for ratings, won't you? You try to destroy my career and damn well nearly succeed. And now you want me to smile, play nice for the camera? Well, I'm not bloody having it. You can't you treat me like that. I'm a big star. Me. I'm big. I'm huge. No thanks to you. No thanks to your show, but thanks to me and thanks to my talent. So you and your producers and your entire pathetic little team can suck my thespian cock. Danica, my darling, how have you been, my love? For you, it's out of the world. Well, that was Lawrence Blunderclatch really just giving us both barrels. <laughs> but. Patrick Bannon should have cornered another huge star here tonight. Is Lil C outshining you, Patrick? <laughs> Fucking hell. And that's why she's not here. God, Dave's got a lot to answer for. I would have run too. I just did not wear the right underwear for tonight, do you know what I mean? All right. Oh, great, man! <laughs> Make it happen, you know, I'm not bloody celiac. Come on. Right, you, shall we? Yes, we are live <laughs> from Western Square with a man who needs no introduction, Florence Blunderclatch. How has your evening been so far? Magical, absolutely magical. <laughs> my most dear friends all gathered here to celebrate my work. One really couldn't ask for much more, could oh, one? Well, on that note, with award season just around the corner, are you hoping to add to your collection for a third time? Well, I really couldn't say. <laughs> but if the association deigned to honour me for a fourth time, <laughs> so be it. It's really not for me to say. <laughs> But let's just say that I know of three little gold men who are getting rather lonely. <laughs> Absolutely. Because I've won three. Three little awards. And each more deserved than the last. Well, it's safe to say that your career has gone supersonic in the last couple of years. How's that been? Well, as I was saying to Stephen only yesterday, that's Stephen Spellman. Yeah. The Stephen Spellman. Lovely chap. I mean, unbelievable mind. I said, Stephen, you know, this really has been quite the ride. Did you know what he said? He agreed with me. Wow. <laughs> and what do you attribute your success to? Well, if we're talking actual numbers, I'd have to say 60% talent, 30% looks, and 10% passion, brackets general, not to mention the incredible coverage on election night. That really was the start of it all. That and my own range of sick bags. Lawrence's chum to catch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Who could forget? <laughs> well, it's been a delight talking to you, as always. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, Patrick Bannon should be with Lil C for a conversation that doesn't involve vomit. Patrick! Aaron, what's the etiquette on going commando at a premiere? Are you still smoking, Aaron? Ooh, honestly. Yeah, it's been two months now. Oh, cold turkey. I feel great. I'll put you in touch with my electro screen therapist. Well, Megan, I'm here in star-studded Western Square, and I'm hoping I'll be able to grab a word with Lawrence Blunderclatch, though, of course, he has famously avoided our show since the whole us airing him losing it thing. But who knows? Perhaps it'll be water under the bridge. Maybe... Fuck he'll... off! Fuck you! And fuck you! That's what you lot like, isn't it? Lawrence's blunder patch. 
few animals have destroyed Helen and I, haven't they, darling? So fuck your questions, <laughs> fuck your interview, fuck your little camera, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. What's that, darling? Oh, yes. Fuck you. Well, that was amazing. Uh, <laughs> but Patrick is with Lil C, who wouldn't dream of such language. Patrick. I absolutely hate these things, Alan. They're all just so full of bullshit, darling. They love you. Mr. Blunderclatch, can I just grab you for a quick word with the NNN? Hello, my darling. So good to see you. Let's move this along, though, yeah? I've got real people to talk to. Uh, well, Megan, I'm joined by not one, but both of the stars, Lawrence Blunderclatch and Helena Canterbury Bochu. Thank you so much. No, thank you. It's thanks to shows like yours that Helena and I are even here. Don't you agree? Well, I couldn't. Absolutely right, darling. <laughs> and uh, you two have both become absolutely huge in the past couple of years, haven't you? Even huger, yes, that's right. I feel very lucky, very, very lucky to be born, well, you know. And Helena is in massive demand too at the moment. She's still the face of a major cosmetics brand, and she's booked to do a one-woman Leah in the summer. Wow, it sounds like you're both very busy. Mm -hmm. But is there any chance we'll get to see you together on screen again? No, oh, no, I'm really not supposed to mention this, but yes, we are doing a little something together. No. I'm playing a weathered starship captain from another galaxy, and Helena is my droid companion. <laughs> but how does that work? I spend seven hours in makeup now. No, um, how does Helena play a droid? Oh, we just pop her on a roller skate. Wow. Well, Lawrence Blunderclatch and Helena Canterbury Boat Shoot, thank you so much for joining me. And we're going over to Patrick Bannon now. Patrick, will we be seeing you in a movie anytime soon? Yeah, Tennis says he's snorting her in the toilets before the night's over. Uh, Lilsey, Patrick Bannon from the NNN. Patrick! Danielle. Oh my god! Oh, you look fantastic! That suit is gorgeous! Oh, thank you. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Yeah, any moment now. Okay. Thank you, Robin. Let's hope not. I'm actually joined here by. Billy Bob Jean Short. And surely you recognize my youngest, pop sensation, Lil D. Her Lil C cover album drops next week. Actually, we were expecting Lil C. Is she...? She's around. She's not been feeling very well. She's put me in charge! Ooh, has she? Well, the courts have. They gave me stewardship over her estate, her finances, and her internal soul. Praise Craglar! Praise Craglar. Wow. But is she coming just because we've got some questions for her? Well, she might be along later, but as her legal, and spiritual guardian, I'll be happy to answer all and any questions on her behalf. And Lil D, was it? Well, you look great. Oh, thank you. You know what? I feel great. Well, who are you wearing? I'm wearing Lil C, and you could be too. Really? Lil C's new line launches tonight. This is one of my favourite looks. It's called. Oh, what a unique name! Hard to spell, though. But of course, if Lil C is basically fashion royalty now with a veritable clothing empire to her name. Yeah, yeah, well, the label's gone from strength to strength since our initial TV launch on this very show, actually. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, really, we have all you to thank for all this. You know, this hat costs more than my second jet. Feel that? Feel that? Yes, it's a nice hat. It's a person. And Forbes magazine has named me the youngest self-made success story ever. And do you have any advice for anyone wanting to follow in your footsteps? Oh, absolutely. All you need to succeed on your own is your family's financial backing and pre-existing fame. It's not rocket science, people. Oh. Well, but in sadder news, am I right that Lil C is going to be retiring from music? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid so. I'm sure you can imagine. At 25, she's far too old for pop music now. She can't keep up with these young stars. So, her best off album is out now, and she's touring that later this year. And then, her farewell tour the year after that. And that's her last chance to see her. So, until the reunion tour, and then the classic tour after that. But it's been a long and varied career, as you can imagine. She's very, very proud of herself. Oh, and if her health's bad, then maybe it's for the best. <laughs> What's wrong with her health? Oh, yes, her health. Her, her poor, poor health. And it's surprisingly expensive treatments. Curse you, Zaytan! Damn, you're into galactic justice! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, we'd better be letting you get back. Uh, those babies aren't going to sell themselves, or possibly at all. <laughs> Billy Bob, Lil C, D, thank you so much for joining me, and do pass our best wishes to Lil C. <laughs> Who? Oh! <laughs> now, it looks like Robin is with a music legend who actually is irreplaceable. <laughs> is that who I think it is, Robin? <sighs> Can you get me out of here? That depends. Can you get me one in blue? <laughs> Uh, they'll see. Hi, uh, oh, over here. Yeah, uh, it's NNN. <laughs> wow, that's quite the, quite the statement piece. <laughs> Did you bring your own lunch? <laughs> they'll see. Sorry, is she? She's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I'm joined here by pop icon. It's Lil C. <laughs> and her father, <laughs> country singer and alien worshipper, Billy Bob Jean Short. Howdy. <laughs> so, Lil C, what's with the bag? She knows what she's done. <laughs> well, we love this look. Is it one of yours? No, you know it's not. We don't do that anymore. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Your clothing label went bankrupt, didn't it? <laughs> yes, because a certain TV show failed to fulfill their contractual obligations. <laughs> well, you look great. <laughs> oh, well, that's probably due to her new cosmetics and wellness brand. Well, I'm not sure that it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let her show you. This oh. is our new eyeshadow oh. palette. She oh. calls this one Glands. Wow, it's scented. <laughs> Wow, that was a surprise. And this next one, this is our new lipstick. We call this shade Lips. Oh, oh, oh wow. Why is it so salty? It's organic. Mm. And this, our next one, this body spray, mm. this is a body mist which rebalances your hormones <laughs> and actually smells like fertility. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, wow. You feel that? Yeah, yeah that burns. Oh. All this is part of Lil C's uh. new range, straight from my veins. Oh, good lord! Breeze Craglar! Ah, uh. uh. so um, you're retiring from the music industry. That must be hard. Well, she's way past her prime, Patrick. It was very hard for her to accept at first, <laughs> but the industry is very, very sure about these things. <laughs> well, you sure we can't convince you to release just one last album? <laughs> We do actually have another album ready, but that's for the label to release in case she dies over the next 10 years or so. Oh, oh really? <laughs> well, given the way she's going, you might get it by Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we better let you get back. <laughs> oh, now, oh. now remember, we need the money. So, she's also available for parties, <laughs> weddings, funerals, and bar mitzvahs. Well, thank you. Lil C. <laughs> That's Lil C there. Oh. oh, and it looks like Robin has got hold of Jesus. <laughs> Is it obvious I'm sweating, Robin? <laughs> oh. You know, I actually invented that look. Yeah. You know, I made my ex boyfriend wear it in the police lineup. He got off. Veggie Veggie the Green Grocer doesn't get parole for another six years. Mm. Jesus, have you got anything to say to the MNN? Yeah, 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 yeah? I've, got, I've got a few things to say actually. Um, firstly, does, does Alex Winston still work there? And um, secondly, can... you're Robin. It absolutely is, Patrick. Jesus, how are you? Yeah, you know, I'm good, I'm great. 
No offence to you, silencing me, silencing the truth. Are you referring to your attempt to incite violence against the democratically elected leaders of this country on live TV? Yeah, exactly. Mm. And instead of being held a visionary, my management and the agent, they all dropped me. Oh, no. You can't break me when you didn't make me, you understand? See, I'm the voice, I'm the hope. You can lock me up, call the doctors, but only the moon can judge me. <laughs> so, what have you been up to since your team cut ties with you? Ah, you know, keep building, keep moving. I'm actually working on a track right now, written, recorded, directed, all by myself. Can we hear a bit of it? What, what now? Oh, I know I'd love to hear it, and I'm sure the people at home would love to as well. Yeah, sure, of course. Um, <clears throat> give me the mic. Yo. <laughs> the news tried to shut my mouth, but it won't be long until they go south. Because my name's Big J and you can't stop me. See, no censorship can stop me. Yeah, see, that's all I've got at the moment. Did you just rhyme me? With me. No! Daddy promised this wouldn't happen again. You're supposed to clap and say, well done, Julian, well done. Well done, Julian. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> ask people that question and I will play nicely. Okay, um, is it true that you're heir to a hotel chain? What? Where did you hear that? And that you're very much alive, parents. La 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 I'm sorry. Are you trying to censor me? Oh, Jesus there, who really does seem to be going from strength to something. <laughs> there are just so many stars here tonight, Megan. It really is the who's who of whatever here. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can grab a moment with someone rather special. I hope you're not too jealous, Megan. Back to you. Yeah, I quite enjoyed that, actually. <laughs> Julian was the captain of the chess club at St Barry's. Always hated him for that. Gigi? Oh, sorry. Back to Jesus. Sorry. Good to see you. It's good to be here with you too, Robin. It absolutely is, Patrick. Jesus, I almost can't believe you're here. How have you been? You know, I like to walk amongst the peoples every now and then. It makes them feel close to me. Right, yes. And to be close is to be human. And to be human to be a part. <gasps> well, that was good, write that down. Hi, right, Rachel, write that one down. It's good to see you've done so well for yourself. Thank you, my child. You know, I have you to thank for that. If it was never for your show supporting me and my music, I never would have transcended. Now, there are rumours going around that you might be running for office. Is there any truth to that? Yeah, 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 that's absolutely true, yeah. But you're aware that elections have been suspended in the territories? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not running to be no Prime Minister. Oh, you're not? No. I'm going to be King of the Moon. King of the Moon? Yes. No, sorry. You're running for King of the Moon? No, I'm not running. It's my birthright. Ah. Uh -huh. And does this have anything to do with promoting your upcoming hip opera, Chase in Space? Hush now. Cynicism is so on the moon. Ah, uh, okay. And how long will this last? Will it go the way of last year's Living as a Mouse fiasco? Or maybe your foray into ventriloquist beats? I don't make the moon rules, I merely live by them. <laughs> So, are you looking forward to seeing The Automated? You know, I don't believe in film. Thou shalt keep thine image still and holy. That's track for what Jesus Christ made us know. OK, thank you for your time and good luck with your new life in space. And with you, my child.
<laughs> well, Megan, that's what success looks like. I'm going to see if we can grab someone else to have a chat. Back to you. Well, that's my holiday to the moon down the toilet. Come on, it'll be fun. I've got a spare ticket. Why not? <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> if I can marry you all, you know I'd try. Hey! Oh, it's amazing to finally meet you, Mr. Neil. Hey, Mr. Neil was my father, and I sold him for a handful of peanuts and a second-hand toaster. <laughs> sorry, sorry, OK. <clears throat> all right, here we go. <laughs> it's absolutely electric, Megan. I can't quite believe it either, but he's here. It's Crazy Neil! Hey, hi, ho, how you doing? Neil, our audiences just love you. They've really, really connected with your ads over the years. What's it like suddenly being so popular? It's crazy. <laughs> People stop me in the streets, they expose themselves, they write me threatening letters. You know, <laughs> the stalker has become the stalky. <laughs> A real taste of Neil's own medicine, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Hey. And, and what's been the most challenging thing about well, being so famous? It's places like this. You know, being around actors and rock stars, they're real crazy. And Crazy Neil knows crazy. <laughs> and I'm used to being the loudest whack job in the room. Hey. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. <laughs> but I know what you're thinking. Hey, Neil, where's the crazy deal? We got crazy deals on chairs. You ever sit in a chair that knock your socks off? No, I can't say that I have. Makes a mess of the carpet. But what do you say? We got a deal? Uh, well... Well, what about Betty Andrews' handbag? <laughs> it's real leather, it's real cheap, and it even contains our heart medicine. <laughs> Spicy. Uh, no, really. I you've got the chair, oh. you've got the bag. You're really busting my balls. What can I do to convince you? Oh. Let me throw in my wife. This is Neil. Uh, it's the latest model. Not a scratch on her, pearls like a charm. What do you say? We got a deal. Look, I, I really I can't take your wife. Yes, you can. I got loads of them. Ooh. Come on down to crazy deals. <laughs> we got crazy deals on chairs. We got crazy deals on meals. <laughs> we got crazy deals on wheels. <laughs> we got wheels on meals. Meals on wheels. We've even got endangered seals. And we got meals with endangered seals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Neil. Well, it's always a dream come true to meet a hero. How about that, Megan? The man himself. Aren't we lucky? <laughs> Back to you. <sighs> um, do you want to go to the sports board tonight? should have gone. I just, I don't want to miss him. It's fine. I'll feel. Just tell her I can feel. God, I'm bursting. <sighs> it's absolutely buzzing here, Megan. The anticipation is killing us. But a little birdie's told us that any moment now, we should get a glimpse of someone incredibly popular with our viewers. A favourite destination for many of the fans. Yes, the mayor of Bumley will be arriving literally any second now. No sign of him yet, but as you can tell, the atmosphere here really is something else. <laughs> Patrick Bannon, NNN, what's it been like since Bumley got so popular? Well, it's been wonderful. The, the tourism numbers have exploded thanks to the marketing campaign. Investors have ploughed millions into the town. We've got more Bumleyan jobs, it's brought more Bumleyan homes. We're all very grateful. <laughs> Of course, it's not all bums and roses. It's almost impossible to get a good look at the hole these days. The crowds are unbelievable. Who can blame them? It's, it's a bloody marvellous hole. And uh, how have you found public service? Well, to be frank with you, it's been the, the greatest honour of my life to serve the town that I love so dear. From the, the banks of the graceful taint to the quiet elegance of the vomit-soaked car park outside the 24-hour petrol station. It's been a privilege, a pleasure, a, a gift, and a, 
And I can't thank the mayor enough for all he's done. Let's talk to the mayor now. Excuse me, sir, can you tell us a bit of what it's like to be elected to such a prestigious office? And do you have any words for your legions of fans out there? Stoic, but blistering honesty from the Right Honourable Peanut T. Fortescue there and his PA. A, a, a proclamation! Uh, uh, quickly, uh, uh, fetch your policy bag. Yes, sir. We'll get it ratified at once. <laughs> well, there you have it, Megan. What an honour to literally see local government at work there. I'm still in shock. Back to you at the studio. Oh, God, do you think they left any of those policy bags? Really? <laughs> no, no. Top three would have to be Malibu Chris, Jurassic Chris and Chris in Boots. I don't think there's even a conversation to be had here. We're on the edges of our seats, Megan, except we're standing. I apologise if I get overexcited, but any moment now, we're going to meet with the cast of the hottest new TV show. It's on every Saturday night. Have you guessed it? Yes, it's Big Chris's House of Chris's. And here's the man himself, Big Chris. Hello. Hi, oh, hey. hey. <laughs> It's good to see you, Big Chris. We love your show. Oh, thanks, mate. It's really good to be here. <laughs> and are you excited for the automated? Oh, yeah. I mean... Come on! All right, one sec. Sorry, it's impatient, Chris. And rude, Chris. Fuck off! Are the other Chris's here as well? Yeah, some of them couldn't make it, but some of the boys are here. Hello, we've got Posh Chris, Quiet Chris and Remorseful Chris. Oh, my. Sorry. <laughs> Pocket Chris is around here somewhere, but I haven't seen him in ages. Uh, what about Chris Reloaded? Oh, no, he's not, he couldn't make it, but uh, Chris 2 Electric Boogaloo is here. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, it's Mormon Chris. Hello. Hi. Have you seen Cardboard, Chris? <laughs> there he is. Oi, oi. <laughs> oh, I love that guy. Look, I wouldn't normally ask this, but spill the gossip. Is there anyone in the cast you don't get on with? Wow, well, everyone would think it would be killer, Chris, but he's all right. Yeah, he's really into crosswords. <laughs> I think it'd probably be uh, Surfer Chris. Oh, bummer, man. Or uh, Disco Chris. Oh! Honestly, he's god awful. It's a bit of cheeky celeb insight there. <laughs> oh, shit, I better go, actually, uh, before Sheriff Chris and uh, Chris Beard fall out again. <laughs> Oh, no. Sorry, I've, I've got to go. It's too late. Sorry. I'll, uh, I'll see you inside. No, yeah. thank you. Thank you, big Chris. Amazing. Megan, you know, I've heard the production have actually had to hire out a separate screen exclusively for them. I'm sure they'll love the movie. What a pleasure to meet with such varied and talented stars. Megan. Honestly, I don't know where they find them. I don't know why and I don't know how they all fit in the back of the Christmas mobile, but my God, that is good television. So we won't touch on the beer too much. Yeah, we can't really promote alcohol or anything like that. Yeah, that. Right. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> Just the unusually wealthy, Megan. I'm here with richest man in the world and beer tycoon, Johnny Hansleeves. Are you excited for the film, Johnny? Don't really have time for film, you know, I'm a busy man. Oh, <laughs> so what brings you to this? film premiere? It's always time for the smooth flavour of a headbutt ale. I see. <laughs> so, what have you enjoyed most since you became the richest man in the world? It's got to be the crisp refreshment that only comes from an ice cold beer. Mm, of course. <laughs> what would you say to the people that criticise your billionaire lifestyle? I'd like to headbutt them all but I'll settle for the full-bodied flavour of a headbutt ale. Honestly, did not think you'd be able to make a marketing opportunity out of that one. So, uh, yeah, fair enough. I have a question for you. How have you managed to avoid the assets and wealth tax? The only thing I'm avoiding is these questions. How have you avoided trying one for yourself? Hmm. Thank you. Oh, oh, 
What is that aftertaste? <laughs> Just too much flavour to contain in one taste. No, no, it says here contains grade D innards, <laughs> and then it just says miscellaneous in brackets. The D stands for delicious. <laughs> well, I think we better throw it back to the studio before you all see my miscellaneous innards. <laughs> Thank you to Johnny Hamsleeves for taking time out of your busy schedule to bring us this live beer advert. <laughs> I'm off to the movies, Megan. To be clear, as far as we know, the inns are mostly animal. Thank you so much for doing this. No, no, no football questions, yeah. Don't do that anymore. No? Can't stand again. Pointless. Right, um, of course. Any second now. Only if you would count an ant colony doing a dance number. <laughs> I know, I can't believe it either. And joining me now is legend of the pitch and of the headlines, it's former footballer... Sorry, I don't talk about football. Ever. Uh, joining me now is Johnny Hams... No, sorry, excuse me, reference. Sorry, I'm going to have to book you for that one. Um, my apologies again. Uh, so you are now the uh, leader of a... Um, it's a personal development programme that promotes growth for sports-based systems improvement. Right, and tell us about this programme. How does it work? It's simple, really, Robin. New members start in Division 1 and through intensive 90-minute courses can accumulate enough points to get into the playoffs to gain promotion to the league. And if you don't get enough points? Relegation. Well, um, you wouldn't want that, I'm sure. <laughs> so what kind of teachings are in your programme? Start with your basics, like your keepy uppies and your boot studies move on to the more advanced stuff by the offside rule. Johnny, will you tell our viewers at home what is... Like Sorry, you've been warned. Shocking, shocking behaviour, and that's you banned from the next two interviews. Oh, oh well, I guess i better hand back to the studio then. I'll um, hit the showers and then get a stern dressing down from the manager in the changing rooms. <laughs> back to you, Megan. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, you're not joking. You're late, again. I'm here, aren't I? I can't get Dante to sleep. Just... It's fine. OK, folks, any moment now. Could you just... <laughs> well, I thought I saw some leprechauns in the green room, but I think it might have been someone's kids. <laughs> but I know, they just keep coming. And here are some more famous faces, or famous brains, I suppose. It's Dr. David Wong and Dr. Ingrid is also here. We have been following your plight so closely on our show over the last few years. What's it like to be back on dry land? It's so wonderful. I'm still not used to it. Every time I see the sun, I want to just scream out in joy. <laughs> I'm grateful every day to your viewers for their support. Without them, well, we wouldn't be here. Oh. Yeah, it's fine. And am I right in thinking that you two have a lovely little boy together? Dante's three now and he's gorgeous. Oh, what a beautiful family. Not since she left me. Oh, oh excuse me, I, I, I didn't mean to... Um... It's fine. <laughs> oh, it's fine, is it? Well, what happened? Well, you know, the normal story. Sometimes things aren't as easy as they were when all you had was a key. And no sooner was she able to see me in daylight than she was zooming off with a moron. Oh, she's not a moron. She's a doctor. A dermatologist is not a doctor. <laughs> so sorry about this. That's fine. <laughs> I'm sure she's got lovely skin. But forgive me if I don't ask her to do a coronary artery bypass. If you carry on eating those pies, you might have to. <laughs> Here we go again. Yeah? Very good. We can't all have pores as clean as hers, can we? At least she doesn't have a PhD in biomechanics. You take that back. Well, thanks to you both for pushing the boundaries of human knowledge. Arsenal. Shut in. Crikey! Well, the movie's about to start, so Patrick and I are about to share a box of overpriced popcorn. Back to you, Megan. 
I'm calling Alice to come get me with Dante. What? You know I don't want him left alone with her. He might pick up his stupid habits. What? Like washing? You're not stuck in an underground cave system anymore, David. Why do you still smell like it? Yikes. OK, Miss Remington, we're nearly ready. Great. But let's make it snappy. I got drugs to take and robots to see. How long have we got, Jean-Claude? Two minutes, Miss Remington. Thanks. Two minutes. God, I'm excited. OK. <laughs> Going live? Hang on. Yes, Megan. Three alpacas on a flatbed sharing a scotch egg. <laughs> but I am just delighted to be joined by legendary CEO and party girl, Sophia Remington. Welcome back to the NNN, Miss Remington. Always good to be getting free advertising, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> so even the heroines of capitalism get to take the night off to go to the movies. Did you say heroin? No one said heroin, Miss Remington. So modest. So, what are you most looking forward to tonight? The after party. Ha, of course you are. But in the actual film? Oh, in the film? The robots. Oh, the brand new computer generated special effects, eh? We built them, you know. The computers? The robots. But, but aren't they. Um... There was a meeting. I know, I was there. I probably called it. <laughs> Who can remember? And I was there with my science guys, the hottest geeks on the planet, by the way. Oh. And I said to them, if they want robots, let's give them robots, <laughs> didn't I? Sure did, Miss Remington. <laughs> but I, I thought they were computer generated. And they looked at me baffled, because there's me telling these super brainy guys to make functioning killer robots when even our best-selling toys catch fire. But I said to them, at Remington's Fist, we can do anything, anything! <laughs> and then there were some shots and maybe a line or two. And then when I woke up, Jean-Claude told me that the geeks had said that they were definitely going to build the goddamn killer robots like I asked. <laughs> OK, but, but in the movie... And the I robot... did what they said, and I stayed away from the lab, because those geeks sure like to surprise me. <laughs> but I will go in there tonight, and I will see my goddamn killer robots. Do you understand me? Yeah, I mean, I've actually... I've got a press release here that does say the robots The are robots com are not computer-generated. And Miss Remington needs to take her seat. Thank you, Jean-Claude. <laughs> Ex-Special Forces. Time. You should get one. Shall I escort you in now, Miss Remington? Absolutely. The robots will be in there, won't they, Jean-Claude? Of course, Miss Remington. Okay. Well, thank you, Sophia Remington. Gosh, <laughs> I think I got a little bit high just standing near her, Megan. <laughs> Back to you. Christ, let's get in and see this car crash then. Just to be clear, Remington's of this PLC have not, nor will they ever be producing killer robots. And also, it is scientifically improbable and legally impossible that you could become intoxicated simply by standing upwind of a CEO, whatever she may or may not have chosen to abide. Crikey, I didn't think you'd heard all of that. We hear everything. Now turn your camera off. Crikey. Just waiting for the studio to throw it back. Take your time, hun. Your show backed me when I was just getting started. Cracky, it's nice that you remember. <laughs> Little decisions, honey. That's what a life is. The sum of a million seemingly small choices. That's your story. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's certainly not my average evening, Megan. And to top it off, I'm joined by famous or possibly infamous CEO Sophia Rimmington. Sophia, may I call you that? That's my name, hon. Just don't wear it out. <laughs> <laughs> and who are you wearing tonight? Actually, this is from Rimmington's Fist Kates, our clothing line. And it's called Grace and Plenty. There's only 10 of them in the whole world. And they're handmade by blind former fisherwomen. You should see the state of their hands. It's <laughs> inspirational. Wow. And so tonight's film, The Automated, is hyped as a cautionary tale. Will your company be taking that warning? Well, it's funny you should ask that, because recently we had the science guys in to reflect on that unfortunate incident with a toy a few years ago. Ah, yes. Mr. Snugglehugs. I'm sure we all remember that. Well, we said, what if, instead of a deadly toy, we make a softer, more feminine version, you know, slap a wig on it or something, <laughs> and teach it how to love? I mean, the technology is still decades away from where we actually need to pull it off, but it's a dream worth chasing, don't you think? Aren't all dreams worth chasing? Well, that depends. If it's sleeping with the family dog, probably not. <laughs> how did you know about that dream? 
It was one time at flute camp, and I haven't licked a toad again since. It was just an example. Of course it was. <laughs> I knew that. Obviously. Um, I was just joking. Of course. <laughs> of course. Well, I should, I should probably. Yes. Yes. Mm, right, you about are. To, you know. The, the movie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll just. Yes. Definitely. And I'll throw it back to the studio and <laughs> go hide under my duvet for a couple of months in shame. Megan. Gosh. <laughs> Wish there was a furry little thing that loved me right now. <laughs> Could Defo use a snuggle and a hug? God, no, not you, Aaron! Oh! I don't know what that growth is, but it's getting bigger and it's angry. Oh, hurtful. We should be getting the signal from Megan any moment now. Blessed be the flard. Okay. Standing by. Actually, earlier on I saw a double rainbow and now I'm thinking it might have been ominous because you'll never guess who just stepped out of a gold flardmobile. It's only High Flood Mistress herself, Sophia Remington. Blessed be the flard. And blessed be these amazing vestments. They're made by Jacques Paradis, you know. We got him to do the whole clergy. You were one of the richest women in the world and you chose to give it all up to the church. The first united church of Flard. That's right, our church. What brought on such a miraculous conversion, if you don't mind my asking? Well, when you look at it, we owe our entire lives to Flards. From the day when one of the ancient Remington ancestors made the very first Flard, out of leather, hope, and two of his own teeth, our past and our future has always been Flard. Blessed be the path to the one true Flard. I must confess, I'm a little surprised to see you out at the movies. Well, who says religion has to be stuffy? It's right there in the tenets. Tenet three, be versatile like the humble flard. Tenet eight, suit yourself to every need like the plucky flard. Well, tonight our need was to see the new movie that everyone's talking about. And spread the love, of course. Crikey, that sounds like the sort of religion I might enjoy. Come and join us, Robin Short. About Abandon your auto cue. Say sayonara to your script. Come and live on our compound. You're cute. You can be one of our wives if you want. You have multiple wives. And husbands. Tenet two, be flexible like the bendy flard. Tenet nine, be seductive like the flirty flard. Crikey, I think that might be a few too many partners for me. Tenet thirteen, be at least six to a pack like the competitively priced flard. Thank you. That's, uh... Inspirational, I think. Tenet 6, be dazzling like the shiny flower. Tenet 16, be thought provoking like Schrodinger's flower. Gosh, thank you so much, High Flood Mistress. Tenet 10, be incessant like the durable flower. I think the film's about to start, so. Really? Yeah. Oh. Well, in that case, Tenet 15, be punctual like the double wrap flower with home delivery option. High flood mistress Sophia Remington there, concluding what has been a star-studded red carpet event for this long-awaited movie. I'm off to see it now, and then I think I might join what could be a sex cult. Back to you, Megan. Okay, let's get all this packed up and then let's get in the auditorium. I didn't just come here to schmoo for the glitterati, you know. I came here to soak in every second of this film. Then I'm gonna call my sister and completely ruin it for her. And a perfect husband with the nose. Is it him? No, I can't see. Take a peek. Is it him? Steve Saxon? Wait, who are we supposed to be interviewing next? Uh, Peter Jensen. Who? Peter Jensen, writer-director. No, no, forget about that. This, this is... Better. We'll do a fake one with Jensen later, he won't even know. Okay, get ready. Five seconds. We'll ambush him. 
thanks, Megan. Well, will you settle for the territory's most eligible bachelor? Five years ago, Steve Saxon was an unknown. Then a series of incredible performances in acclaimed productions from Hamlet's Jam to the curious rise of Algernon Ding Dong made him the most wanted man in drama. He's been voted sexiest man under 25 for three successive years. Now, let's see if he'll talk to the NNN. Excuse me, Mr. Saxon, Steve, have you got a moment to spare to talk to the NNN? Oh, hi, the NNN. You know, your show gave me my first chance at an audience. The raw me. Steve 1.0. I remember. Even then, everyone could see there was something so special about you. The whole thing is burned into my mind. A moment is the very least I can give your amazing viewers in return. Not that we're actually going anywhere. Where is she? Are you going to introduce us to your date? Oh, but of course, this I'm is... I'm Charlotte Winstanley Dash Hamilton. I was in Hey Friendship too. You know, that scene you burned into your mind. I was in that. <laughs> no. Sorry. Don't remember you at all. Are you sure you were in that? Yes, I was the pretty one. Tell her, Steve. Uh, looks are really important. Well, if you say so, Steve. So, it's been a big year for you. I believe you've been tackling the bard. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I've been working with a, an enfant terrible called Quentin Sucker Punch. Uh, we've been doing all the Shakespeare's. Crikey, all of them? Yeah, so we shoot one a week. Uh, I play all the parts, so I learn them at the weekend and then we shoot them naked in his steam room. The lighting in there is really good. Sorry, did you say naked? Yes, oh, well, he is. I'm in a variety of hats. It's uh, an old theatrical tradition. I had a single out. It was called Look At Me. And you did that advert, didn't you, babe? Is that your dental floss? <laughs> <laughs> and the sex tape, of course. Steve! I don't like to talk about that. Although apparently it's available for 11 99 everywhere. Just ask your news agent. So, what is your favourite Shakespeare play then, Steve? Ooh, I like uh, the wordy one. It's starting soon. I'm going to miss the trailers and we haven't even got any popcorn yet. She'll be here. Oh, I'm so moving late, guys. What took you so long? There was an injured pigeon. I'll explain on the way in. <laughs> now, of course I remember you from that legendary first appearance. Really? Her too. <laughs> you were such a serious little thing. You had that horrible sister. Yes, that was me. I'm the horrible sister. Don't be so hard on yourself, babe. Looks are really important. Thanks, Steve. So, what have you been up to, Harriet? Actually, uh, last year I was overseas bringing art to the starving children from outside the territories. They may not have food, but they can still have Canadia. <laughs> Good for you. And uh, now I'm in an experimental physical theatre piece about the existential angst of Wicca. Amazing. So artsy. We do it above a pub on Thursdays. I was also the girl who got murdered in the bath in Night Slasher 3. Haven't seen it. But she was brilliant. Thanks, Steve. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Steve. I think it's starting soon and I really need a tinkle. Oh my god, you need the loo now. We're going to completely miss the trailers. You are so selfish. Sorry. We've got to go. Oh, of course. Thank you so much for talking with us and enjoy the movie. Thanks. I love the NNN. I love you guys. Stop <laughs> showing off. Sorry. Oh my god, Megan. I, I can't believe that. Steve Saxon, Harriet Winstanley Dash Hamilton, and Someone else, can't remember her name for the life of me. I'm too starstruck, if I'm honest. I think I've just come. Back to you, Megan. Steve Saxon, Aaron. Steve Bloomin' Bloody Saxon. <laughs> I'll need a copy of that interview for my show reel. And uh, after the movie, remind me that I need to buy some dental floss. 